osteochondroma and multiple hereditary exostosis. An osteochondroma is the most common benign bone tumor in children. It is a cartilage-capped bony spur arising on the external surface of a bone. The spur contains a marrow cavity that is continuous with the cavity of the underlying bone. A cartilaginous cap overlies the bony spur and is the source of growth and a fluid sac called bursa. The cartilage cap is thick in the child, narrows during adolescence, and generally is less than 1 cm in the adult. Hereditary multiple exostosis are characterized by two or more exostosis in the appendicular and axial skeleton. Osteochondromas generally occur spontaneously. Hereditary multiple exostosis are usually the result of a genetic disorder. However, there is also a non-heredity form of multiple exostosis in which multiple osteochondromas occur by chance. They may have a visible stalk and a bulbous cap, like a mushroom or cauliflower. Osteochondromas with a visible stalk are called pedunculated. Flatter ones with a broader base are called sessile. Pedunculated osteochondromas are more common in solitary cases, and sessile osteochondromas are more common with hereditary multiple exostosis. Osteochondroma can occur in any bone. It usually appears near the ends of long bones, usually near a growth plate area, but is seen most often around the knee or the proximal humerus. The distal femur is the most common location. It typically presents during the second decade. Males are affected more often than females. This tumor generally grows with the child and stops growing once the child completes puberty and remains static throughout adulthood. Most cases do not cause symptoms. They often go undiagnosed until they show up on an imaging test taken for an unrelated reason. However, you might notice a small, hard, painless lump on one of your bones. Usually near the joints, most commonly around the knee, but almost all bones can be affected. Pain with a particular movement if the tumor is rubbing against a tendon. If the tumor puts pressure on a nerve, there may be numbness and tingling in the associated limb. Circulation problems in a limb if the tumor is inhibiting a blood vessel. In some cases, an injury can cause the stalk of a pedunculated osteochondroma to break. This will cause immediate pain and swelling in the area of the tumor. Osteochondromas can cause functional problems, decreased range of motion, by causing joint impingement. In more severe cases, multiple osteochondromas HMO, can affect normal bone growth in children. Children with this condition might have short stature, crooked limb, angular deformities, an arm or leg that is longer than the other. Because the symptoms may also be caused by other, more serious health conditions, it is important to be evaluated by a physician to get an accurate diagnosis. Always consult your child's physician if you have concerns. The doctor will talk with you about your or your child's general health, as well as any symptoms in order to get a good history of the problem. During the physical examination, the doctor will look for tenderness over the bone and evaluate the mass. And if he suspects osteochondroma, he'll order an imaging test. In almost all cases, an osteochondroma can be diagnosed using an X-ray. Magnetic resonance imaging MRI, is warranted when there is a concern for adjacent soft tissue impingement, new focal pain at sight, or there is a concern for chondrosarcomatous transformation. This test is particularly useful in identifying tumors in areas that are difficult to image on a plain X-ray. The most dangerous complication of osteochondroma is cancerous transformation which usually happens within the cartilage cap and leads to the development of secondary chondrosarcoma. Most of these tumors are low to intermediate grade, which is usually not an aggressive type but warrants removal regardless. 
As a rule, every patient with a new onset of unexplained pain near a pre-existing osteochondroma or the tumor has continued to grow after the skeleton has stopped growing, should undergo imaging, preferentially MRI, to exclude secondary chondrosarcoma. The most reliable imaging finding is the thickness of the cartilage cap. As I've already said, the cartilage cap is thick in the child, may be greater than 2 cm, narrows during adolescence, and generally is less than 1 cm in the adult. A cartilage cap thickness greater than 3 cm in children or 2 cm in adults is a sign of malignant transformation. Malignant transformation is extremely unusual and is therefore not a reason to remove all osteochondromas. It is estimated that it occurs in approximately 1% of solitary osteochondromas and approximately 5-10% to of hereditary multiple exostosis cases. For this reason, the doctor may want to keep it under observation. Treatment Most osteochondromas need no treatment. These tumors will stop growing and remain stable when your child's bones stop growing. Patients and their parents can be educated about the rare event of malignant transformation and its signs and symptoms with follow-up as needed. Patients with hereditary multiple exostosis may need to be monitored for development of limb deformities. The doctor may want to take regular x-rays to keep track of any changes in the tumors. Surgery is only necessary if the tumor is causing significant pain, a fracture, restricting movement of a joint, putting pressure on blood vessels or nerves, affecting growth, is very large in size are concern for malignant transformation. Treatment for osteochondroma is generally a simple surgical removal of the lesion from the bone surface. The surgeon will be careful not to harm your child's growth plate to ensure normal physical development after the operation. If the osteochondroma is causing deformity of the adjacent joint, such as knock-knee condition, leg length discrepancy or other problem, Additional procedures to address the deformity may be performed at the time the tumor is removed. After surgery for osteochondroma, the patient should be able to go home the same day of surgery. The recovery for a small osteochondroma excision is brief, around two weeks for the swelling to subside and the incision to heal. For larger osteochondromas, that require a larger incision and more surgical exposure, the recovery may be longer, 4 to 6 weeks, and may include use of crutches. If correction of deformity is included as part of surgery, the recovery may take several months depending on the specifics of the surgery. The likelihood of your child's osteochondroma recurring after resection is extremely low, 2 to 5%. Although more common if it is removed at a young age, 